So guys, thank you first of all so much for the support on the West Ham World, the first episode on JNOFM. Time for the second episode. We've been doing well since the last time you were with us, but with all that being said, we're now shooting pretty high and a player, a big player, has moved on. All of that coming up next. In a parallel universe, West Ham United decided that Slaven Bilic wasn't the right man to lead West Ham to glory at the London Stadium. Instead, they chose this man. Hi there, my name is Jano. So today we are going to face Man City at home, a big, big tie, a big fixture in the Premier League. This is the kind of fixture we want to be winning if we want to challenge for one of those top four spots, which is possible on our current form. We also have Atletico Bilbao in the Euro Cup to face as well. So two big fixtures which could start the momentum for our season in the right manner or it could see us start to slowly decline. But before we do that, we do have a few more transfers to cover. So let's have a look at the business we have done since the last time you were with us. Okay, so players out. We have actually put Dimitri Payet out on loan Man City have loaned him, so we don't have to pay his wages and we're also getting a fee in for the rest of the season and they do have a 10 million buying clause. I decided to sell pay it, nobody wants him. So that is a downside. We literally had to drop his asking price to try and get those wages off the bill. We were struggling with the finances as well. I maybe brought in a few too many players so we did need to get his wage budget so we did need to get his wage off the budget. Adrian has also gone out on loan. We've also loaned out Ashley Fletcher. Czech Chiote has also gone out on loan to Lazio. And John Gadetti has finally left us, but he didn't leave us for Man City. He actually left us for Liverpool for 21.5 million. Could rise to 27.5 million in total though. It's going to be a big miss because he was firing them in for us. But we did try and bring in some players to make up for that. We have brought in Mark Anderson for 7.5 million, who is a regen, who I'm hoping to make into something pretty promising. Another youngster, another English player, who hopefully I can build into some world-class top talent to take over the world with. And then we also strengthened our defence because I felt like if Reese Oxford or Agbonna got injured with Reed Award out, we might struggle. So we brought in Michael Keane, 24 years old, English with a resolute personality, good quality player who puts up our English quota so we don't have to worry about the amount of English players we have anymore. So that is the business I've done. The transfer window is now shut. So we're going to go into these two games, maybe give Michael Keane a run out in one of them and hopefully pick up some victories which will really get our season going in the right direction. So we are going into this tie with the usual 4-3-3. We have Radjkovic in goal with Flanagan on the left, Byram on the right, Reese Oxford and Bonner as the two central defenders, Van Kinkle, Ozan Tufan and Will Hughes as the three midfielders with Lozano, Berahino and Lanzini up front coming against a 4-1-2-2-1 or a 4-3-3 with Joseph Hart in goal. Bernat and Lindolf as the two wing-backs. Mangala and company as the two centre-backs. Witzel, who we did look into signing over the summer as a central defensive midfielder. Gundogan and Silva in the central midfield with Hazard brought in on the left with Kevin De Bruyne and Aguero up top. Hazard, De Bruyne and Aguero. Wow. That could be a gruesome threesome for us to try and prevent from scoring here. But we are at home and we want to make London Stadium a fortress, which isn't something that is happening in real life. So let's see if we can actually make it happen on Football Manager. And we kick off, and I'm not going to lie, I have a feeling, although they are 8th and we're 9th, or no, they're 6th now, if they get a draw, I do feel like this kind of quality of side, my side shouldn't be beaten just yet. But hopefully... Tactically and as a team, we just perform better than them. It would be nice. Will Hughes now has the ball outside the box. Lanzini turns, gets it to Byron. Byron can whip in a cross now. To Berahino, 1-0, 25 minutes in. Wow, 25 minutes has already gone. We're 1-0 up, 25 minutes in. We've had four shots. Three have been on target. Berahino is filling those Gadetti boots up very nicely. 
Byram just gets it to the byline, whips in the cross. Berahino beats what looks like company to the ball and heads it in at the near post. 1-0 up. Great start by the Hammers. This could be a great season for us. I may try in every trophy just to get some silverware this year. Because I think this team can just get stronger. And Lanzini has played through Berahino. Oh, Berahino could have made it too if he'd just learnt from Ayu last season and done a wonder chip. We would be 2-0 up. Flanagan now throws it into Van Ginkel. Flanagan back to Van Ginkel. Gets tackled. De Bruyne has it. You know De Bruyne can find a decent ball out to Aguero. Who finds a great ball to Hazard. On the counter, he's hit the post. We have to be careful of that, clearly. They can counter quickly and effectively. Hopefully we win this ball here as it bounces around. Oxford heads it, but it's just found Gundogan. Gundogan to Silva, out to Lindolf. De Bruyne has got the ball. Gundogan, please, one of my players win that ball. Get the ball off of their players. We know how good they can be. Great header out by Oxford. Headed on by Berahino. Hughes has picked it up. Now we can counter ourselves, hopefully. Lanzini couldn't find an early ball, though. Now Van Ginkel's got it to Byram. Tries to play it over the top. Lanzini with a header to Berahino. And it's saved by Hart. That would have put us in a very healthy position going in at the second half. Ozan Tufan now can find Lanzini. Shot is blocked. Please don't let Aguero win that. Oxford get there. Thank you very much. We are sitting at third if this result stays the way it is going right now. Behind Tottenham. And who would have funk it? Burnley a second. Alright, don't get complacent boys. We're 1-0 against a side that has the likes of Aguero and Hazard and De Bruyne. So we need to be on our toes. Alright, Radjkovic plays it out to Byram. Byram looks inside to Ozan Tufan. Back to Byram. Byram is starting to play very well in that right-back position. Ball tried to play over the top to Berahino, but he can't quite get there. Van Ginkel now has it. To Lozano, to Berahino, to Lanzini. The shot wasn't quite there, but the signs are there that if we grab another one, we should pick up the victory in this game. Lanzini's not having the best game out there, so we're going to bring on Callery. I'm not sure where to play Lanzini. He's played well for us in midfield, but I really do like the threesome of Will Hughes, Van Ginkel and Tufan. Could be another one of those situations where I just don't have anywhere to play Lanzini, so I might have to think about selling him. But I definitely want to keep him a lot more than I wanted to keep um, Dimitri Payet. We're going to give Fernandez a run out. He has looked pretty promising recently, especially in pre-season. So we want to try and give him some more game time. If we get a chance, I'll show you his stats at the moment. But Fernandez looks like he could break into the first team with some really good performances. Okay, Radkovic plays it out to Flanagan. Flanagan tries to find Berahino, who looks like he's picked up a knock. So you know what, we will substitute him off after this highlight. Callery now has the ball, though. Callery dribbling forward with the ball. No one's tackling him. Goes out wide to Byron. Byron crosses it to Berahino, who heads it just, just over. And now we'll take Berahino off because we do not want Berahino to be out for too long. Callery will take up that central forward position and Ayu will take the position out wide. Okay, Lozano has whipped in a ball. It's gone to the back post. Of Bonner cannot beat the goalkeeper though. I'm really worried we're going to regret not making some of these chances pay. Just don't concede a last gasp equaliser, please. A 1-0 win against Man City will be great. Great for morale, great for the team, and it looks like it's likely to happen. All we've got to do is keep possession and wait till the ref blows that whistle. And there we have it. We have picked up a 1-0 victory against Manchester City. We are now sitting in third. Good win, boys. Well done. This is just polar opposite to last season. Three wins, one draw, one loss. Burnley, though. Look at Burnley sitting there in second. And our rivals Spurs sitting at top. Now we're going to go into a game against Atletico Bilbao in the Euro Cup. Which we did well in last season. So hopefully we can go past the quarterfinal stage. Which we got knocked out by Man United last season. Hopefully we can get to the semis or the final this year. So let's go and play Bilbao. 
So guys, we are going into our away game to Atletico Bilbao with a few changes to our lineup from the last time. Radkovic is still in goal, Byram's still the right back, but Cresswell comes in at left back. Reese Burke now plays alongside Ogbonna. Will Hughes and Ozan Tufan keep their place. Van Ginkel is dropped to the bench so Fernandez can get some game time. Lozano is up front with Lanzini on the other side and Callery is now leading the line because Berahino is out for three weeks. Uh, we'll have a quick look at Fernandez before we get into the game. That is what his stats look like currently. Uh, we're trying to get him tutored to get a better personality, but he's looking decent. Uh, three and a half stars is what he's maybe potentially going to become. And if he doesn't become something great, we can always sell him for a bit of a profit. Uh, 3.1 million is what he's valued at at the moment. Did we buy him for 5.5 million? That seems like a lot of money. Ouch. I did not know we bought him for 5.5 million. That is disappointing. But hopefully we can get more than 5.5 million back. Okay, so we kick off and Atletico Bilbao are the hardest team in our group. And we're away. So this is probably the hardest fixture we could start with. Which is why we've got a pretty strong lineup put out today. If we can get a draw, that would be good. We want to get first in this group to give us the best chance of progressing in the knockout stages. So any sort of result here away to Atletico Bilbao will be a plus. We did manage to beat them last year. Ooh, Radkovic comes up big with the save there. We did actually play them in the knockout stages last year and we did knock them out of the Euro Cup. So Atletico Bilbao will want revenge and at the moment it looks like they're going to get it. They did beat us at home when they played at home but we beat them by more when we played at the London Stadium. So it wouldn't surprise me if we actually do lose this game. A great cross in there. Arderiz rises high or Adderiz. What a leaping header that was. Could be in trouble in this fiction now, boys. Suzayeta, who's a decent player, now has it on the right. Plays it back to Demarcos. We may have to whip out the 4-1, the 4-3-1-2. Because it looks like we're getting overrun. Yep, 2-0 already. <sighs> Not the greatest start to a game, is it? Again, played out wide. Demarcos now finds a ball into Adariz. And wow, our defenders just need to stick to him a bit tighter and make sure he doesn't get those headed attempts on goal. Okay, so we are going to try this one here. West Ham 4-3-1-2. We will put Lanzini as the shadow striker behind Callery and Lozano. Everything else is very, very similar. Hopefully this can have a good effect on this game. Maybe we can get two goals, come back into it and get a tie. But Burkett now looks oh, well played Byram. Well played Byram. Creswell look at number 28. Callery now has the ball, plays it into Lanzini. Lanzini has space to run into. It drops to Lozano who gets tackled too easily. Lozano, you're meant to be good at dribbling. You could have at least done something with it there. Adariz now has the ball. He's been playing really well this game. Probably man of the match already unless something big happens. Demarcus crosses it. Oh, wow. Adariz has just torn us a new one in 35 minutes. Demarcus again with the cross. Is that how good he is in the box when a ball is crossed in? Radkovic gets his hands to it. But weak hands, that should have been saved. I think we're just going to have to scratch this one up to a very, very disappointing start to our Euro Cup campaign. 3-0. Not what I was expecting after that victory against Man City. I could Man Mar I don't like playing a tactic to try and counteract someone else's tactic. But right now, I think the clever thing to do would be to just, well, not even Man Mark. Just hack Adder is out of the game, then we might stand a chance. Well, as I think we've already lost this game, we're just going to give Joe Powell a run out. Probably bring on Dominic Iortha before the end of the game as well. Just get some people some experience of European competition. Because I don't think we can come back. I mean, 8 shots, 4 on target, that's not too bad. 52% possession, but just 
They've had 10 shots, 7 have been on target, and they've made 3 count. They've just been lethal. Sometimes there's not much you can do about it when they're just that damn good. Maybe playing Reese Burke was a big, big mistake. That's the one big change I'd say to this team. I mean, Van Ginkel is clearly better than Fernandez, so maybe Fernandez shouldn't have come in. Maybe Reese Burke shouldn't have come in. But it's one game. We do have two games against Apeol and AFC Astra, who hopefully we should beat in both away and at home. And then hopefully we can get revenge on Bill Bow when they come to the London Stadium. But what a negative way to end this second episode of the West Ham World on JNOFM. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in as always. If you're new around here or you've just come over from JNO United, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to smash that thumbs up button and do what you can to share this channel around. We are now almost at 60 subs as of the time of recording this. I've been JNO, you guys have been awesome, and remember, it's all about the game.